everyone. The New Testament contains five different metaphors for the foundation of the church. One metaphor that has been disputed is Jesus Christ calling the Apostle Peter rock. You are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That Matthew 16:18. Some have tried to argue that Jesus did not mean that the church would be built on Peter, but on something else. Some argue that in this passage there is a minor difference between the Greek term for Peter, that's Petros, and the term for rock, Petra, yet they ignore the obvious explanation. Petra, a feminine noun, has simply been modified to have a masculine ending, since one would not refer to a man, Peter, as feminine. The change, in, the change in the gender is purely for stylistic reasons. These critics also neglect the fact that Jesus spoke Aramaic. And as John 1.42 tells us, in everyday life he actually referred to Peter as Kepha or Cephas, depending on how it is transliterated. It is that term which is then translated into Greek as Petros. Thus, what Jesus actually said to Peter in Aramaic was, You are Kepha, and on this very Kepha I will build my church. The church fathers, those Christians closest to the culture and in apostles in time as well, and theological background they clearly understand that Jesus promised to build the church on Peter as the following passages show first of all Tertullian and Tertullian said was anything withheld from the knowledge of Peter who is called the rock on which the church would be built with the power of loosing and binding in heaven and on earth and that's taken from AD 200 the Lord said to Peter, On this rock I will build my church. I have given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you shall bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and loosed on earth will be considered loosed in heaven. What kind of man are you, subverting and changing what was the manifest intent of the Lord when he conferred this person personally upon Peter? Upon you, he says, I will build my church, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And that's taken from A.D. 220. The letter of Clement to James is next. Be it known to you, my Lord, that Simon Peter, who for the sake of the true faith and the most sure foundation of doctrine, was set apart to be the foundation of the church, and for this end was by Jesus himself with his truthful mouth named Peter, that's taken from the letter to Clement in A.D. 2.21. The Clementine homilies. This is what they say. Simon Peter said to Simon Magnus in Rome, For you, you now stand in direct opposition to me, who am a firm rock, the foundation of the church. That's taken from Clementine homilies in A.D. 2.21 The next person we deal with is Origen. What does he say? Look at Peter, he says, the great foundation of the church, that most solid of rocks upon whom Christ built the church. And what does our Lord say to him? Oh, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And that's taken from his homilies of 248 AD. Cyprian of Carthage. What does he say? The Lord says to Peter, I say to you, he says, that you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. And to you I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. On him, that's Peter, he builds the church and to him he gives the command to feed the sheep. And although he assigns a like power to all the apostles, yet he founded a single chair, cathedra, and he established by his own authority a source and an intrinsic reason for that unity. Indeed, the others were that also which Peter was, that's the others meaning the apostles, but a primacy is given to Peter, 
whereby it is made clear that there is but one church and one chair. If someone does not hold fast to this unity of Peter, can he imagine that he is still holds on to the faith? If he should desert the chair of Peter, upon whom the church was built, can he still be confident that he is in the church? And that was written 251 AD on the unity of the Catholic Church. And he goes on further. There is one God and one Christ and one church and one chair founded on Peter by the word of the Lord. It is not possible to set up another altar or for there to be another priesthood besides that one altar and that one priesthood. Whoever has gathered elsewhere is scattering and that's taken from his letters of AD 253 AD. And he goes on further. There speaks Peter upon whom the church would be built, teaching in the name of the church and showing that even if a stubborn and proud multitude withdraws because it does not wish to obey, yet the church does not withdraw from Christ. The people joined the priest and the flock clinging to their shepherd are the church. You ought to know then that the bishop is in the church and the church is in the bishop. And if someone is not with the bishop, he is not in the church. They vainly flatter themselves who creep up, not having peace with the priests of God, believing that they are secretly, that is invisibly in communion with certain individuals. For the church which is one and Catholic is not split nor divided, but it is indeed united and joined by the cement of priests who adhere to one to another. The next person we deal with is Ambrose of Milan. This is what he says. Christ made answer, You are Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church. Could he not then strengthen the faith of the man to whom, acting on his own authority, he gave the kingdom, whom he called the rock, thereby declaring him to be the foundation of the church? And that's taken from his letters of around 2 seven nine AD and he goes on it is to Peter that he says you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church where Peter is there is the church and where the church is no death is there there but life eternal that was written AD three hundred and eighty nine Pope Damasus the first himself this is what he says Likewise, it is decreed that it ought to be announced that the Holy Roman Church has not been placed at the forefront of the churches by the conciliar decisions of other churches, but has received the primacy by the evangelic voice of our Lord and Saviour, who says, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The first C, therefore, is that of Peter the Apostle, that of the Roman Church, which has neither stain nor blemish, nor anything like it. And that's from the decree of Pope Damasus in 382 AD. The next person we deal with is Jerome. And this is what he says when he's talking to a man by the name of Jovinian. But you, Jovinian, will say, it was on Peter that the church was founded. One among the twelve is chosen to be their head in order to remove any occasion for division. And that was written by Jerome in 393 AD. And he goes on further. I follow no leader but Christ and join in communion with none but the blessedness Pope Damasus, that is, with the chair of Peter. And I know that this is the rock on which the church has been built. Whoever eats the lamb outside this house is profane. Anyone who is not in the ark of Noah will perish when the flood prevails. And that's taken from one of his letters of 396 AD. The next person we deal with is Augustine of Hippo. This is what he says. If the very order of episcopal succession is to be considered, 
Then how much more surely, truly, and safely do we number them, that is, the bishops of Rome, from Peter himself, to whom, as to the one representing the whole church, the Lord said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not conquer it. Peter was succeeded by Linus, Linus by Clement. In this order of succession, a Donatus bishop is not to be found. Next, the Council of Ephesus. What does that say? Philip, the presbyter and legate of the Apostolic See of Rome, said, There is no doubt, and in fact it has been known in all ages, that the holy and most blessed Peter, prince and head of the apostles, pillar of the faith, foundation of the Catholic Church, received the keys of the kingdom from our Lord Jesus Christ, the Saviour and Redeemer of the human race, and that to him was given the power of loosing and binding sins, who down even to today and forever both lives and judges in his successors. And that was part of one of the acts of that same council, Council of Ephesus, that is, and written in 431 AD. Pope Leo I, what does he say? He says the following. Our Lord Jesus Christ has placed the principal charge on the blessed Peter, chief of all the apostles. He wished him, who had been received into partnership in his undivided unity, to be named what he himself was when he said, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, that the building of the eternal temple might rest on Peter's solid rock, strengthening his church, so surely that neither could human rashness assail it, nor the gates of hell prevail against it. And that was one of the letters he wrote in AD 445. And last but not least, the Council of Chalcedon, or Chalcedon. This is what he said. Wherefore, the most holy and blessed Leo, Archbishop of the great and elder Rome, through us, and through this present most holy synod, that is the council, together with the thrice blessed and all glorious Peter, the apostle, who is the rock, foundation of the Catholic Church, and the foundation of the Orthodox faith, has stripped him, that is, Dioscorses, of the Episcopate. And that was taken from one of the Acts of the Council, Session 3, in AD 451. Thank you all very much for listening to me today, and God bless you all. Oh.